energy management is more important than time management. It is more important than project management. It's more important than task management. Energy management is more important than almost any other productivity strategy you can think of. And in this video, we're talking about why. If you're new here, I am Brittany. I am the founder here at Work Brighter, and we help you escape hustle culture and redefine productivity to find a better balance between productivity and self-care. And energy management is like the bridge that does that. Energy management is at the core of everything I do at Work Brighter. So if you're not new here, you've probably heard me talk about it before. I freaking love it. It has just been so revolutionary to my work, my life, my, well, energy. So guess what? Even if you've heard me talk about it before, you're gonna hear some more now. But in this video, I specifically want to focus on why energy management should be prioritized above and before other productivity strategies like time, task, or project management. And if you're not familiar with energy management, the name pretty much explains what it does. Energy management is the idea of managing your work and your life around your energy levels. This is opposed to say time management where you are prioritizing your time and your work with your calendar and your schedule at the center of everything. Or say project management where your productivity system is most focused and centered around things at the project level. Energy management means recognizing that your energy levels fluctuate throughout the day, the week, the month, depending on what you're doing, and then arranging the rest of your work, or at least as much as you can, around those fluctuations. One way I like to look at it is think of your productivity system or your self-care system as a web of interconnected strategies. Most approaches just consist of like throwing a bunch of strategies together and like mixing them up all scrambly and it's like a tangled ball of yarn. But when you really focus on and prioritize energy management, that is like untangling that ball of yarn and recombining it by crocheting it into a beautiful crochet thing. And finally, energy management means recognizing that your energy levels are finite and only semi-predictable. Also, that there are multiple types of energy. There is physical energy, mental energy, spiritual energy, creative energy, social energy, and probably more if you gave me longer to think about it. And if you are chronically ill or disabled and thinking, hmm, this sounds like spoon theory. It is, it is like spoon theory. I like to say that while spoon theory is this kind of special language just for our community, energy management is like the universal version of that language that non-disabled people can speak to, therefore making life easier for everybody. So now that we're clear on what energy management is, let's talk about why it needs to come before these other productivity systems. In general, the reason energy management needs to come before anything else is because energy management is as much a self-awareness exercise as it is a productivity strategy. Learning your energy levels requires learning about yourself, how your brain and your body work on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you know yourself better, you can apply all of these other strategies better. For example, let's look at time management first. If your primary productivity tactic is some form of time management like calendar blocking or time tracking or something like that, the success of your entire productivity system hinges on being able to accurately estimate how long tasks are going to take. But how long a task takes depends on how much energy you have. Like have you ever tried to do something that you know should take five minutes but then for some reason it took an hour? That's an example of that. To use an example about physical energy, when I was in college um, with with my morning classes, it used to take me twice as long to walk to the class as it would take me to walk home. Because when I was walking to class, I was just waking up, I didn't have my physical energy fully woken up yet, and so I wouldn't be able to walk as fast. But then by the time I'd sat through a few lectures and walked around on campus, I was more alert and I could just zip on home real quick. Or to use a more current example, if I try to record videos like this one when I am low on social energy, oof, you do not want to see it. I'm not able to just bring the energy and personality that I want to. It takes me like five times as long to just talk through the stuff and I have to repeat each thing I'm trying to say like 10 times as many times as normal. So your time depends on your energy and if you're trying to manage your time without a good grasp on that energy stuff first, it's just not going to be as accurate. You are going to run out of time on tasks that you don't have the proper energy for and then if you are really strictly 
living by your calendar, that means you're then gonna move on to the next thing without finishing what you had wanted to. So now that we've covered energy management versus time management, let's look at it compared to project management. First of all, being able to effectively plan projects includes being able to effectively plan and manage your time. So everything is like a hierarchy where project management builds on time management and then time management should build on energy management. Everything builds on each other and when the energy management is the foundation, everything is just so much stronger and more stable. But then separately, knowing how to plan projects as effectively as you can also requires its own unique relationship with understanding your energy. For example, by now I've figured out through trial and error that when I do my monthly planning, my like limits are either two big creative projects or one big project and two smaller projects or four smaller projects. And I can kind of assemble the pieces in any combination that fits. Like this month, I'm also working on updating one of the courses in the Workwriter shop, and that's gonna take a lot of creative energy. It requires video creation, script writing, workbook design, uh, lots of stuff that's gonna be fun, but also really draining. So that is the only creative project that I'm doing this month. And then in addition to that, the other projects on my monthly plan are things like making a few updates to my website, uh, making some changes to my Notion system and updating some stuff on the back end of my email marketing system. All of these other smaller projects are things that will only take an afternoon or two, but more importantly, don't take that much creative energy. So even if I am exhausted and tired, I can still get the job done. On the other hand, if I tried to say update two courses in one month or update one course plus batch a bunch of YouTube videos, it wouldn't work. The energy math just wouldn't add up. I would run out of the right kinds of energy that I need for creative work and content creation and I'd end up probably finishing nothing despite how theoretically well planned out the projects were. Because, say it with me, energy management needs to come before project management. So if you do try to organize your work around projects without the right energy understanding and energy management in place, you're very likely to stall out when you run out of the right types of energies for something and then you end up just spinning wheels and making no progress on anything. Whereas if you plan projects in accordance with your energy, you can say work on the creative stuff until you're all out of creative juice. Then you can switch over to the admin work while your creativity recharges and then switch back. That's my plan for this month. With energy management, you can always choose the best thing to switch to when you're tired without further burning yourself out. The same thing is true with task management. I'll keep this one brief because most of the reasoning I have already laid out for you in the sections on project management and time management, but basically without energy management, you just don't know how a completing a task is gonna go. Like I said, if you're organizing your work around your calendar or time management and you have the wrong energy for a task, you might have to move on from that task not having finished just to keep up with your calendar and the way that you've set out your time. But if you're organizing your work around task management and you go to do that same thing with misaligned energy, instead of leaving it incomplete, that might end up looking like you still sitting there to write that email that should have only taken five minutes. An hour later, the rest of your day's plans be damned. So if you did previously organize all of your productivity around on one of these other tactics, how can you switch from that into a more energy first approach. There are three basic steps. The first is to conduct an energy audit by tracking your energy for just like a week or two. I have a lot of resources on this. If you're interested, we have other videos specifically about conducting an energy audit. And then we also have tons of different types of energy trackers and even a web app coming later this year over on the WorkWriter website. So check those out if you're looking for more help. And then once you've conducted the energy audit, you want to analyze what you've just learned about yourself. You start looking for your body's and your brain's natural rhythms, patterns, cycles, stuff like that. And in addition, you're going to start being able to see where you are fighting and working against them instead.
instead of with them. And then finally, the third step is once you've done that and discovered what those natural rhythms and flows are, is to start making changes to your schedule to work more in alignment with them. Take better advantage of your natural rhythms. And of course, all of that starts with deciding to prioritize energy management in a way that you haven't before. So hopefully this video convinced you to do that. If I've convinced you, comment and let me know that you are excited to start managing your energy. And if you want to learn more about conducting an energy audit and getting started with energy management, check out this video next. Bye-bye and have a brighter week.